Uh, a very wonderful person by the name of John Duddy and, uh, and Ed Wolf, a couple of Calgarians. Very great people that have been right there behind me to give me some help. Great assistance. And while discussing with them, I said, geez, you know, this can't be. I said, no, you know, I, I, can't, I can't accept this. Because in 2001, I went through something and experienced something that I knew that I had an insight into the Bush administration's relative to their activities in 9-11. And as I began to research all the activities from behind the scenes and unearth, I've been investigating things around 9-11 for eight years plus, relentlessly, nonstop. And I'll tell you why it was a personal thing for me on a number of different fronts. But when I found out that George Bush was going to get $200,000 to do what? To talk to who? For who, who would listen to him? Who would listen to him for $60? <laughs> who would want to hear anything he had to say for a $100 honorarium? I would never pay a dime to hear that man. Well, I heard enough of everything he had to say for eight years, he and the rest of his crew, that so deceived the, humanity, the human population into believing that we were in an endless war with Muslims and peoples from around the world, brown-skinned peoples, in an endless war on terror. And when I found out post 9-11, that this is what we've been in for eight years with the Bush administration. And I watched how many people were being killed with impunity. And I watched, I watched soldiers, men and women, going into Afghanistan and Iraq and hauling people out of their houses committing horrendous rape and murder and killing in blood, cold blood, with impunity, with a license to just go in and create mass murder under the guise of fighting a war on terror. A war, according to Dick Cheney, that will never end in our lifetime. And I said, wait a minute. Because I already knew instinctively that that was a staged event in order to get into Central, in order to get into the Middle East, in order to extrapolate the oil and the gas and run pipelines from the Caspian Sea Basin. I had already studied this long before they actually moved in and made this move. But I'm not giving up. I'm not giving up just blind allegations without researched facts. And that's what I'm here to talk about tonight, because I'm going to say right from the very onset, just like I knew post that the, with the day 9-11 happened, I knew that it was an inside job. Everything that I knew intuitively, I researched and validated my intuition. And I also know that it is important here tonight to understand where we're at with this so-called endless war on terror. And we have to understand that we are not coming out of that endless war on terror, even with this Obama administration, because where were the rules? The rules have been completely uh, uh, nullified, neutralized. The rules have been completely abolished and eradicated. There is no rule of law today as we speak. There is none. We have the rule of tyranny. We have the rule of force. We have the rule of military men and might. We have the rule of police states. We have the rule of those who are in control of the world's resources. We are in a resource war. There is no rule. There is no democracy to export. We need to import some democracy here in North America instead of exporting tyranny.
But you just can't say that without giving some facts. You just can't make these allegations without giving facts. And I'm here to give you some facts tonight that I have researched. And I'm sure most of you have already researched many of the different things that I will discuss here tonight. And we'll find places, common grounds to agree upon. But we're here tonight to understand we have to find a way to work our way out of this rule of tyranny, this endless war in our lifetimes. The only way to stop this endless war in our lifetime that the Bush administration uh, uh, put into effect predominantly through Dick Cheney and the neoconservatives Paul Wolfowitz, Paul Bremer, and uh, and Libby Scott, Scooter, Scooter Libby Scott, and others within the Project for a New American Century, the neoconservatives of the Bush administration, in order to stop this endless war on terror, we have the only way to come out of that. It became a dictatorial mandate of the executive body of the Bush administration as a result of 9-11. Now the only way to change that executive dictatorial policy and restore the ability to wage war internationally in the hands of the Congress is to expose 9-11 as an inside job. That's the only way we're going to come out of this. <laughs> if somebody knows another way we're coming out of it, I want to hear it tonight. I want to hear it. I want to hear it. So when you say, so now we go back. Well, I have young children. My youngest is 12. He'll be 13 for his own. His name is Che, Che Thunder. Then I have my rainbow, Rainbow Rose. She's 14. She plays hockey. Very beautiful young girl. Then I have my older kids, Dylan and Angela and Nicosa and John John and, and uh, my daughter Aura. I have beautiful kids, very beautiful kids that I love dearly. No matter where they are and where, what they're doing today, I wonder what the world's going to be for my children. Matter of fact, one of my sons. His brother is sitting right here at the tonight. I got to meet him uh, yesterday. This is a this is a young man by the last name of Cook. His uh, my brother John or my son John Jones' brother. So I have to think, where are we at? How are we going to stop this war on terror? Because this war on terror has no rules. The only rules it has is is we're going to keep going in and we're going to keep fighting boogeymen called Al-Qaeda. I call them el cia -da. <laughs> Because Al-Qaeda really was nothing but tools. CIA assets, they're nothing but tools, man, for U.S. foreign policy. And U.S. foreign policy basically is nothing but resource wars. I mean, when you think about it, do you, does anybody have to convince a First Nations person about resource wars? Does anybody here have to tell me that there's no such thing as a resource war? That colonialism in North America and a hundred million Indian dead in the worst Holocaust throughout history, maybe second to the Holocaust of the Africans totaling 300 mil. Wow, just to 